cleansing power in the blood of the Lamb, you are now a new creature. All things have passed away. Is that right? I said, is that right? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus. You see the first thing that he does. He reconciles us with himself. He's happy with us. We're happy with him. He approves of our lives. And we acknowledge his blessing because coming to Christ reconciles us with God. He says, and he has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. He has given to us what? The ministry of reconciliation. And we who are children of God, we want people of God to be blessed. And if you see any family, husband and wife, and they have some things against one another, if you know about it, Hey, don't wait until you're an officer, you're a worker, you're a minister, you're a child of God. He has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. You say, brother, sister, can I talk to you? Your life has always challenged me. And now I see that the way you're walking is like you have something against one another. And then you minister to them and you help them in love because that is your ministry now. That those of us who are ministers and preachers, what a great ministry of reconciliation the Lord has given us. Anytime we see that one child of God A, another child of God B, they're turning their backs on one another. We have the ministry of reconciliation, reconciling them in verse 19 to which that he is that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. No more accusation of one another. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. And you know why people are not reconciled? They magnify the differences and they minimize areas where they agree. They will not be able to reconcile when you magnify your differences and you minimize your agreements. And if you look at all those of us who are here, we have areas of agreement. We agree that God is almighty. We all agree. We agree that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We all agree. We agree that the Holy Ghost, the third personality in the Trinity, that He is the Comforter. We all agree on that. We agree that the whole Bible is the Word of God. We agree that there is an heaven to gain and a hell to escape. Look at the things we agree on. Maybe we have some minor, minor differences. I'm thinking of this particular minor idea in this direction. You are thinking of this minor little idea in this different direction. You know why we don't reconcile? Because we magnify our differences and we minimize our agreements. Maximize your agreements and minimize your differences. And then we will be reconciled. I said we are reconciled. Husband and wife, maximize your agreements and minimize your differences. There will be reconciliation. Brothers and sisters, maximize, expand, enlarge, exalt your agreements and minimize the little, little things you disagree with. And then there will be reconciliation with your landlord. With your landlord, maximize the things you can agree on and minimize all the things that you don't agree with. You know, his habits are different, his lifestyle is different. But when Jesus comes into his life, he will see like you see, he will talk like you talk, he will act like you act. And then when you continue to uh, kind of discuss together, communicate together, then your differences will become smaller and smaller. 
the Lord has given us the ministry of reconciliation and let us rejoice in that ministry. Now it says in verse 19 to which God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us what? The word, the word of reconciliation, not the word of scattering. You know, sometimes two people have a little minor disagreement. And then somebody comes in. And what he says, the word he puts into it, even drives them farther apart. That's not our ministry. Our ministry is that of reconciliation. And what we say will be the words of reconciliation. Then verse 20, now then. We are ambassadors for Christ. Ambassadors for who? Who are you now? I said, who are you now? Ambassadors for Christ. As the God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 13, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, reconciliation. That's the will of God. Cutting a patch, cutting asunder, magnifying differences, putting down one and exalting ourselves and destroying unity and agreement. That's not the will of God. That's not the ministry into which we are called. We are called into the ministry of reconciliation. I'm talking to you about the steps that lead unto the spiritual fulfillment. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nice, made near, by the blood of Christ, for in for ye is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. No matter when there's disagreement between A and B, there is an invisible wall of partition. And it's like, even your mind, if you're going the direction A, it's going the direction of B. He will come against that wall. And that wall will send him back. There is resentment in the mind, in the heart. And the Lord is saying, when there's reconciliation, the wall of partition is broken down. Between us and God, that wall is broken down already. I said between you and God, that wall is broken down already. The sacrifice of Christ, the cross of Christ, the blood of Jesus, the intercession of Jesus for you and for me, already breaks down that middle wall of partition. All it remains now is between you and your brother, between you and your sister, between you and your neighbor, between you and the co-tenant, between you and the landlord, between you and your director, between you and your employer, between you and your employee, to break down the middle wall of partition. And then it says in verse 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, you know, disagreement eventually will generate enmity. When you are not that middle wall of partition, it will generate dislike. You will hate the appearance of the other fellow. You will hate the standing, the posture of the other fellow. That's telling you something. Reconciliation is missing. Bring it back. Reconciliation. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace and that he might 
reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereof. Now, after we have reconciled with God and thank God by repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are reconciled with God. Is that right? Are you reconciled with God? Praise the Lord. Now you must also reconcile with your brother, your sister, your neighbor, and the person very close to you. Now, who is the closest person to you? Talking naturally now. Your wife, your husband. Your wife, and your husband. Reconciliation must start there. Have you ever heard people say, Charity begins at home. Reconciliation begins at home. It begins in the family. If you are being kind of drawn apart, the Lord is saying, with that kind of disagreement and division, and then being put far apart, one from the other, the fulfillment of the promises of God will be delayed. I pray your blessing will not be delayed. Give me a good, good day. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 7. First Corinthians chapter 7. From verse 10. And unto the marriage I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Here the Lord is saying that there is a commandment. It is not a suggestion. This is not an advice. This is not just a good idea. This is not just a proposal. This is a command. And Paul the Apostle said, Yes, I'm an Apostle. And I could have given you a command like this on the authority of an Apostle. But this commandment is not coming from me. It's coming from the Lord. What's the commandment? Unto the married I command, yet not I. But the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Same way, let not the husband depart from his wife. Verse 11, but and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. Whatever the difference is, whatever puts you asunder, the commandment of the Lord is reconcile. God never takes pleasure in division, in disunity, in disagreement, in coming apart. Never. Whatever you receive, well, the man was unfaithful. You are unfaithful to God. And then now God has reconciled with you through the Lord Jesus Christ and he has forgotten your sin. He has forgotten your faithfulness. What has she done? What has he done? More than what you have done against the almighty God. The Lord is saying the path into blessing, the steps into spiritual fulfillment is that there must be reconciliation. Let her be reconciled unto husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. Well, as the Lord is telling us to reconcile with the husband, with the wife, he's also telling us, reconcile with your children. Reconcile with your children. And you know, sometimes a child might do something I don't expect, something you don't expect, something we never expect. And the Lord is saying, reconcile. Reconciliation is the word. That's what will make the blessings of God to flow into our lives and to flow into the family. We're looking at Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. And I'm reading from verse 2. And Abraham said, of Sarah is why, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gera, said, and took Sarah. And God came to Abimelech in a dream by night. 
and said unto him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, but the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Abimelech took Abraham's wife. Well, on the, on the understanding that Sarah was just a sister to Abraham, but you know the story. Sarah was more than a sister. A wife. She was the wife of Abraham. And they have been together for all these many years. All of a sudden, this uh, king of Gera took Sarah. And God was unhappy with that. God disagrees with people that will take another person's wife and separate husband and wife. God rejoices in reconciliation. Bring it back together. And then God said to Abimelech, you are a dead man. Because the woman you are taking belongs to another man. Verse 4. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister. And she, even she herself, said he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. And God said unto him in a dream, Yes, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thine heart. Why also withheld thee from sinning against me? Therefore suffered, permitted, and loud I I be not to touch her. Now, therefore, what? Tell me out loud. Restore, restore, restore. That's reconciliation. Another person's wife you have taken. Restore. Another person's husband you have enticed and taken. Restore. Therefore, restore the man his wife. For he, we're told in number seven, is a prophet. And he shall pray for thee. And thou shalt leave. If thou restore her not, know that thou shalt surely die. Thou and all that are thine. Instead of eternal life, there will be death. Instead of satisfactory, fruitful life, there will be death. We will not die. I said we will not die. And the path to life and life.